Hey everybody, welcome. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna quickly show you how to create a Google account. Now, before I go any further, listen to what I just said. Notice that I didn't say the words Gmail account. And there's a good reason for that because Google email, both G Suite and Gmail is now one of the most popular services on earth. In fact, over a billion people each day use Google email. But the reality is that no one has a Gmail account. No one has a Gmail password. What a billion people do have, however, is a Google account and a Google password. We'll talk more about this in a little bit and in future video tutorials. For right now, what I want you to do to get started, open up your web browser and I want you to navigate to google.com. I want you to be staring at Google's homepage. Now take a look over here to the top right. You should see this blue sign in button. If you don't, then you probably see something like this. Notice how there's no blue sign in button. And over here to the top right, we have a circle with a letter in it, which is usually the first initial of the account holder's name. This tells us that we're already signed into an existing Google account. So one of the things you want to do first before creating a new Google account is you want to go ahead and click on the circle and you want to make sure to sign out of any accounts that you're already signed into. Now, if I do that, we get to this page again where we now see the blue sign in button. I'll go ahead and click on that blue sign in button. And now we're taking a Google sign in page. Now notice there is no way here, there's no link for us to create a new Google account. So if you're in this situation, what I want you to do is click on the down arrow for whatever email address you see here. And then I want you to choose use another account. And by the way, before we leave this screen, let's assume that somebody borrowed your computer and you don't know how to get rid of this email address, which is their email address. You could always click on this link here titled remove account, click on the X and you'll get this pop up informing you that if you remove this account, that you're removing the account from this browser. It doesn't mean that you're deleting an account. It just simply means that this browser won't have access to this account's bookmarks or any of its cookies or any of its settings. So since I really don't care, I'll go ahead and click on yes, remove, and we're taken back to our sign in page. At that point, we now see this link over here titled create account. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And this is called Google's account creation page. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and provide our first name and last name. Make sure, by the way, to capitalize the first letter of your first name, first letter of your last name. So let's assume my name is Jim Smith. Now notice what just happened. Over here in this username field, Google already thought of a good username for me. It basically just arbitrarily thought, hey, you know what, let's go ahead and uh, suggest SJJim71615. Now think about it. I mean, do you really want to spend the rest of your life giving someone that email address? No. So what I want you to do now is just delete it. So this is one of the most important steps when getting online, whether it be for yourself personally or for business, and that is choosing a good username. If there's one thing on this planet that there's absolutely no shortage of, that is lack of common sense and the reality that most people couldn't spell if their life depended on it. So hypothetically, let's assume that I own a flower business and I want my email address to be flowers for you at gmail.com all spelled out. And by the way, while we're on the subject of usernames, usernames are not case sensitive. So I encourage you to do this all lowercase. Remember all one word, there are no spaces in usernames. The other thing I'd like to mention is that often people will choose a username of john.doe or jim.smith or flowers.for.u. The reality is that the dots are irrelevant because Google strips the dots from any username. So if I gave, uh, if I sent an email to jim.smith, it's actually going to get delivered to Jim Smith without the periods. So just remember, dots are irrelevant. So for the purpose of this exercise, I prefer if you did not include any dots in choosing a username. The next step is to choose a password. And I strongly advise all of you to first write down a password. A password has to be a minimum of eight characters or digits and a combination thereof. So make sure to write it down first, then go ahead and enter that password in these two fields. Now, when I click next, watch what happens. I get an error message that's basically saying, hey, the username flowers for you is already taken. So one thing I do not want you guys to do is to get discouraged. 
you're going to find that a lot of the good usernames are already taken, but do not give up. Worse yet, I don't want you to do something like this, where you choose an email address or a username of flowers, the number four, the letter U, because that becomes inherently dangerous for you. Besides, do you really want to spend the rest of your life telling everybody, oh, by the way, don't spell out the word four or the word U. Instead, you need to use the number four and the letter U. That's going to get tiring and old really quick. But more importantly, think of it this way. Let's assume that your email address was flowers, the number four, the letter U. And I sent an email to flowers for you spelled out. That means that the person who has that other email account could very easily be intercepting emails that were originally intended for you. So again, this is going to be your email address moving forward. So go slow, don't give up, get creative, try to make sure that your username is short, sweet, and to the point and almost impossible to misspell. So let's go ahead and create an email address here. One we are pretty sure is available. So we'll choose JS for John Jim Smith, sample email at gmail.com. Then I'll click the next button. So, wow, even that email address is taken. So let's change this. Since this is just a tutorial, we're going to choose uh, Bill Smith. So let's see if that's available. And even that is taken. So let's try Robert Smith. So we'll change this to an R. And that worked. Now focus your attention over here to the top right. Notice what just happened. My browser, as well as your browser and everyone else's browser, is going to pop up as soon as you try to log into something and it's going to say, hey, Bonehead, do you want me to save your username and password? Now, when it comes to emails, I cannot say this uh, strongly enough. Do not ever, ever have your browser store your username and password for your Google account. Think about it. If you were visiting my office and um, you created a, or if you logged in, we were going out to lunch and you said, hey, John, can I go ahead and borrow your computer? I need to check my email real quick. If you had my browser store your password, the next time we get back from lunch, all I have to do is go to Google and I'm automatically signed into your Google account because the browser has stored that password. The other reason I encourage you not to ever have your browser store any passwords is because it, think about it, it takes two seconds to type in a password and it's a great security measure and also allows you to remember your password. This way you never forget it because you're always having to type it in. So for right now, if you haven't made up your mind, go ahead and click on the X up here in the top right. The next time you sign in, you'll get this message again. But our recommendation is that you choose never. The next step of the process is to provide Google with a phone number. So. Don't worry about this. A lot of people are thinking, wow, you know what? I don't have a cell phone. I'm unable to receive text messages. For right now, just put in any valid phone number, one that at the minimum you can receive a phone call on. Then I'll click next. And what Google's done here is they're basically asking to verify that that in fact is my phone number. So at this moment, I just received a text. Let me go find that. And by the way, when you get this random six digit code that Google's going to text you, the phone number that it comes from may also be comprised of six digits. So don't confuse the two. Usually it'll actually say G dash, and that's the actual number that you want to provide after you receive your verification code. Now, for those of you who may not be able to receive text messages, you can always click on this link here titled call instead. And what Google will do is it'll call your phone in an automated uh, IVR system will just uh, state six digits and at that point you just type in that verification code in this field and at that point just click verify. So at that point we're done, we got past that step. The next step is to provide Google with a recovery email address. I cannot stress enough that even though this is an optional field, go ahead and put in an email address that you know you'll have for a long time. If you don't have another email address then Consider going out and getting another one, leaving it blank for right now. Go out and create another Google account that you use solely for the purpose of recovery emails. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put in my birth date. Choose my gender. And by the way, all these options you could change later. This is something that Google did not allow you to change 
previously now with uh, privacy acts and everything taking place google does allow you to change virtually any setting that you have within google so you can always change this information later on down the road for right now i'm going to go ahead and click next and the next screen we see is basically Google asking you if you want to get more from this phone number, such as uh, the ability to receive video calls or messages or to make uh, other services such as uh, ads more relevant to you. So that's up to you. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead and click skip. The next screen we're taking to is Google's privacy and terms. So at this point, you just simply need to scroll down, pretend that you could read very, very quickly and click I agree. At this point, we're signed in. Take a look over here to the top right. We now see the first letter of the initial of the account we created, which is for Robert Smith, and there's our email address. So now we're signed into our Google account. Now take a look at this square here made up of these nine dots. If I click on this square, we now see all the different Google applications and services that are now available to us. And down here, you'll notice Gmail. So again, Gmail is just one of many, many different services that Google offers after you've signed into your Google account. So at this point, I can either click on the icon for Gmail or come over here and click on this link at the top of the browser for Gmail. At this point, since this is our first time signing into this Google account using Gmail, we're prompted with this short brief tutorial since I'm familiar with what it says, how to use Google. I'm just simply going to click on the X up here to close it out. Now, today is August 8th of the year 2018. And one of the hurdles that we have here at gmailhelp.com is that we're constantly having to update our videos. We love Google engineers, but these guys don't leave well enough alone. And they're constantly changing the way things look and the way things feel. So take a look down here. It says Gmail is getting an update. In less than two weeks, Gmail will get an updated look and new features like snooze. You can still go back to the classic. So here we have two options. We can either update now or update in two weeks once it becomes mandatory and live. So because we really don't have a choice and eventually we're all going to be using this new Gmail interface, I recommend that all of you update now. So if I do that and click on the update now button, this is what the new Gmail interface is going to look like. So here I'm going to go ahead and click on next. I'm going to choose the default view, click OK. And now we're staring at the new Gmail interface. If for whatever reason within the next two weeks, you don't like this interface and you want to revert back to the classic view, then over here to the top right, you want to click on this icon of this gear then click on the first item from the drop down, which is titled Go Back to Classic Gmail. If you want to do the opposite, you want to get used to what's coming, which has a lot of great new features, which we'll cover in other video tutorials here at gmailhelp.com. Simply click on the gear again, then try the new Gmail. That's it. That's how easy it was to create a brand new Google account. So if there's two things, actually three things that I want you to take away from this video, it's one, make sure to go slow. Don't compromise. I mean, think about it. This is going to be your email address moving forward. Make sure to choose an email address or a username that is virtually impossible to misspell. Try to make it as short and sweet as possible. And two is to protect yourself. So after you're done watching this video, scroll down to the bottom of this page and go watch our other video on how to set up and invoke Google's two-step verification, which makes it virtually impossible for, for anyone to access your Google account without having physical possession of your phone. And the third thing I want you to remember to always do is if you're borrowing someone else's computer, make sure to take two seconds, come over here to the top right hand corner and make sure to sign out of your Google account. That's it. We hope you enjoy this video and make sure to leave us any comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.